I was deployed, I had the opportunity to go to the Jordan River while on a mission to visit soldiers in Jordan. I learned that not only was that the place where Jesus was baptized, actually in Jordan, but this is also the area in which John the Baptist wandered. The Jordan River was not as wide or as big as I had expected, and being on the Jordan side of the river, it was actually a lot quieter than the Israeli side. At one point, it was just a small group of us walking along the banks of the river, imagining what it would have been like when Jesus and John were walking there. In fact, it was probably a lot more quiet for us there than it would have been for John when he was baptizing the crowds. Out of all of the moments of that deployment, this was definitely one of the most peaceful moments. Sitting on the banks of the Jordan River, staring at the river and into Israel. Peaceful though. That's not how I would describe this interaction between John and those coming to be baptized. In this week's Gospel text, which is a continuation of last week's message from John the Baptist, we hear John's version of a holiday greeting to the crowds. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. One of these years, my family's Christmas card is going to have the greeting, Merry Christmas, you brood of vipers. I don't know how many people will get the humor in it. I think it's kind of funny. I guess it's similar to Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Now, all joking aside, John seriously just called all of them a bunch of snakes and said anyone who doesn't bear good fruit will get cut, cut down and thrown into the fire. Holly jolly goodness right there. The people were like, well, shoot, what do we do? In reply, John said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and what should we do? He said to them, do not exhort money from anyone by false threats or accusations and be satisfied with your wages. So don't steal stuff and money from people. Don't be corrupt. Share with others, especially those who don't have anything. Be a good and decent human being. Got it. I feel like Advent and Christmas time, really the whole holiday season, is a time where it's a lot easier to remember to do that. We have food drives, toy drives, benefits, appeals for winter clothing. We give gifts to loved ones. We share holiday greetings. All of those are good and wonderful things, and I think that we should definitely keep on doing that. The issue comes in when we only do those things at Christmas time when we think it's good enough to think of others just during the holiday season and the rest of the year, we're super self-focused. And in fact, there's a couple things going on here. We can fall into the trap of thinking that we do something good for others once or twice or a few times, then we're good to go and we don't have to worry about it for a while. And the other is that we can get hyper-focused on doing works and think that it's in doing good works that we're saved but neither are true. We can sometimes be that viper that John called the people as much as we hate to admit it. I don't wanna get called a snake. I don't wanna act like a snake. We can get caught up in ourselves and we can forget about what really matters. But John speaks to that when the people continue to have questions. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat in his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And so with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. John was encouraging people to do good and decent things, to repent of their wrongdoings, to not rest on their laurels, and to think that they're good to go simply because of a few things that they do, or because they come from a certain family tradition, or belief system, or a certain family, a certain last name. Ultimately though, none of that's good enough because, well, John didn't have the power to save. We don't have the power to save ourselves. The one who was more powerful to save was coming, Jesus. Advent is all about waiting for the coming of our Savior, having hope and faith in Jesus, being filled with joy and peace and trusting in the promise of Christ's power and might and saving grace. Jesus saves even the brood of vipers who might try to flee from the wrath to come. The good news is that Christ took the wrath to come for us because of his love for us. Christ freed us from the worry of being perfect because he knows that we're not gonna be perfect. We are gonna get self-focused at times, self-centered. We're going to work too hard at other times. We're gonna be a bunch of snakes at other times. No, this doesn't give us leave to not do good things for people, to not be decent human beings. In fact, one of the early church fathers, St. Augustine wrote, repentance for our sins does indeed change us for the better, but even repentance will not appear to be of much use to us if works of mercy do not accompany it. Works of mercy, doing good things for others, it works hand in hand with our forgiveness. Throughout centuries, we've heard of and seen how through this promise that Christ gives us, we can be more generous and we can show mercy. One way is in following the example of the saints that have come before us. On December 6th each year, my family celebrates St. Nicholas Day. We set our shoes out the night before to have them filled with oranges and chocolate coins in the morning. And we read a story of St. Nicholas the evening before, where we learn about this bishop who in the third century would leave coins and food in the stockings and shoes of the people of Myra, which is modern day Turkey, to help others. The spirit of St. Nicholas's generosity continues today especially during the holiday season. What a way to spread joy to others. Now, the beginning of John's message this week might sound a bit joyless, but he tells us about Jesus and Jesus is coming. And it is with joy that we can be certain that our Lord has come and that through him we are given the most precious, joyful gift of all, eternal life with him. May you find ways to share this joy with others, not just during the holidays, but all year round. Amen. Now during this next week, I encourage you to think about, meditate on, journal about, or talk about these questions. Where in your life do you do acts of mercy or show kindness and generosity to others? Is it just during the holiday season or is it all year round? And second, where do you find joy during this time?